All right, guys, welcome into my college football week two official best bets. I believe I looked back and I think I went 10 and 0 in week one. So, what an amazing start to the season for me. But here we go, week two, my top 10. I believe there's six bonus bets at the end, but I've got my top 10 right here. And the first one, it's going to be Ohio State minus 43 and a half versus Arkansas State. Guys, Vegas has overreacted. The original rumors, this game was going to be Ohio State minus 50. Vegas overreacts to the Buckeyes struggling on offense against Notre Dame. And this line gets neutered all the way down to 43 and a half. But there's games like this with Ohio State facing teams like last year with Akron, a few years ago with Miami of Ohio. The Buckeyes score and normally score a minimum of 60 points. If Ohio State gets into the 60s, there is zero chance they will not cover this 43.5 point spread. I've got them scoring 73 points, but even if they don't get that high, they will get into the 60s. McCord will start the second half, but he still should be able to put, put, put together several drives that give Ohio State more points. So Ohio State minus 43.5. That is my first bet. My next one, it's going to be Alabama, who is now minus 20.5 at Texas. It's just simply not enough. I think this uh, spread opened at around 18, and it's been bet up to 20.5 at this point. Bama, to me, is a lock to score 40 plus points at least. I think the only question mark would be Alabama's wide receiver core. And you've got a guy like Bryce Young to help that out. Great defense. Quinn Ewers, he was all right in week one, but he's a very young quarterback starting his second game against Nick Saban, Will Anderson, Dallas Turner, unbelievable pass rushing duo. This could be a game that's Maybe a little competitive in the first quarter, but it's going to get away from Texas. And everyone's, you know, it does seem like when everyone's in on a team, they end up not covering, but everyone is in on Alabama minus 20 and a half right now, at least what I've seen. Uh, that's where all the money is. Next, we have Miami minus 26 versus Southern Miss. So unless I'm missing something with Southern Miss, I just do not see how they cover a 26 point spread. I expected this to be a 33 or a 34 point spread in my opinion. Even if Miami wins like 40, 49 to 17 or something like that, they're still covering the spread and that's giving up 17 points to Southern Miss. So this is a game I would be shocked if Miami didn't cover this spread. Southern Miss is basically an extension, you know, FCS type school. They're not good at all. Uh, so Miami minus 26. Also, Expect to see a few more passing touchdowns from Tyler Van Dyke. I think he only threw passing he only threw two passing touchdowns last week as they get ready for Texas A&M. That'll be a huge non-conference game. Next, we've got Duke at Northwestern, the under 56. So this is something I normally always do whenever Northwestern is playing at home at noon. You always got to take the under because it normally will always hit. I was shocked this number was 56. I understand Northwestern showed some decent offense against Nebraska, but let's be real. This game's got 24 to 13 written all over it. It's going to be clearly under 56. It's noon. There's going to be 10 people there. It's the battle of the academics. You got to love it. I actually wish this game was on at like 10 a.m. It'd be funny, but either way, the under 56 is a lock. When you've watched college football long enough, you can kind of find games. This is one of those games where you know there's going to be no atmosphere. When you understand the context, it becomes very easy to uh, predict these games. Number five, Penn State minus 24 and a half versus Ohio. Ohio's defense is just horrific. Penn State football is back. They got a huge week one win against Purdue. This game could be you know, something like a 39-6 to type final score. Again, Ohio's defense is terrible. They proved it in week one. Penn State, even with Sean Clifford, yeah, he turns the ball over a lot, but he's a veteran QB. I believe this is a noon game on ABC, and Penn State's a, a good program, and they're going to want to come out and solidify that week one win with a week two stomping of the Max School Ohio. 
Number six, Marshall plus 20 and a half at Notre, or excuse me, just plus 20 at Notre Dame. This is going to be a very close game. There are going to be a, apparently heavy, heavy storms expected uh, in this game. Notre Dame's home opener. Of course, Notre Dame, very good on defense. Week one, bad on offense. I kind of see that trend continuing. Marshall put up 52 points against Norfolk State week one. I understand it's not tough opponents, but it's proving they can score on the offensive side of the football. Closer game, Notre Dame wins it. Number seven, it's Pittsburgh plus seven versus Tennessee. It's just simply too many points for Pittsburgh at home. I just do not trust Tennessee, even after their big week one win, even after all the hype surrounding their offense. I understand it, but they're on the road, 330 game. There's some life into that Pittsburgh program. Close game, even if Tennessee's even if Tennessee wins it. You're looking at like a 31 to 28 type final score here, folks. Let's be real. I have Pittsburgh covering the uh, you know seven plus seven. Number eight, it's Maryland plus 28 at Charlotte. So last week, you know Maryland, we all expected them to cover the spread um, at home against, I believe, Buffalo. They ended up not covering. This is a game where Charlotte is just terrific. Overall, very odd that Maryland is traveling to Charlotte, but Charlotte is a historically bad team. Maryland minus 28. This is going to be like a uh, maybe a 56 to 14 type game, 56 to 21 type game. Maryland, even on the road, will be covering this spread. And this line is shooting up. I think it opened at 26. It's up to 28 right now. Number nine, Houston who is now plus three at Texas Tech. I love Houston straight up to win this game, 100%, uh, but plus three at Texas Tech. A little disappointing last week with Houston. They weren't able to cover due to the two-point conversion, the sham two-point conversion rule in the third overtime. I still love Houston this year. I've said from the beginning, they will be a New Year Six team, in my opinion, the one New Year Six team from the group of five. They're going to beat Texas. Texas Tech's not bad. They're nothing special. I've got Houston winning this game like 48 to 31. Number 10, Iowa State at Iowa. Yes, the under 41 and a half. This is just one of those games where it's like, how low does Vegas actually go? They're all the way down to 41 and a half. I don't think it's low enough. This is going to be like a 19 to 17 rivalry type game. Iowa's offense is historically, historically bad. They've got a very good defense, two elite linebackers, one elite cornerback. All of that combines. Also, Iowa State, new starting quarterback. Brees Hall is gone. Very low scoring game. Vegas is trying to set it low. But honestly, if I was Vegas, I would have put this at 40 flat and see what people would do. Uh, I think 41 and a half is too high, even still with this being a college game. So those are my top 10 best bets. And then we also do have some bonus. Virginia plus four at Illinois. Uh, Virg Virginia is uh, going to win this game straight up, guaranteed. That's a complete lock. Uh, Illinois is not good. They're not good this year. Um, Virginia, really good offense. Brendan Armstrong, great wide receivers. I really don't care that Virginia is not great on defense. They're winning this game at Illinois. Uh, FIU at Texas State, the under 55. So when you've got two really bad teams and you've got an over-under at 55, it's just very attractive to me to take the under in that matchup. I did it last week with FIU taking the under and it hit. I'm doing it again this week. FAU at Texas State, the over, I mean, I mean, I was expecting the uh, over-under to be like 51. If it's 55, I find great value in that. I will take it. So the under in just a really bad matchup there. Next, we have USC uh, minus 9.5 at Stanford. So this is a, a crazy line to me. I was expecting this to be USC minus 13, maybe minus two touchdowns at Stanford. Stanford is not good. Once again, this year, they've been bad for several years. They just do not have the talent. And I just know... With this being a 7:30 ABC game, this is really Lincoln Riley can come out with a more talented team, way better athletes, and just run it up on Stanford and kind of announce that USC is back. Uh, it's going to be great publicity for them. To me, they're going to win this game 48 to 14. It will not be close. They're just way more talented. It's like it's the perfect game. I think there are flaws with USC that they're still trying to gel. I understand all of that. 
But this is a game against a team like Stanford. You can just out-athlete them, in my opinion, and win this game very easily. So I have USC winning this one big. Number 14, Auburn minus 23.5 versus San Jose State. San Jose State is horrible. I could see Auburn winning this game 48-3 to or something like that. Number 15, Georgia Southern plus 21.5 at Nebraska. So some low-hanging fruit here with... Nebraska really just struggling to cover the spread the first two weeks. It's tough to pick them in week three. Maybe they can self-correct and they're due to cover the spread. I guess you could say that. Uh, they're 0-2 against it, but I don't know, 21 and a half against a Nebraska team who seems to have a head coach that's just a complete lame duck. It's just tough not to take that. It's just great value. And then number 16, I love BYU minus two and a half. I think BYU wins this game versus Baylor, the one ranked matchup of the of the week. Probably 38 to 28, something like that. BYU crushed South Florida. They were up 38 to nothing, I believe, late in the second quarter. Uh, I, I know South Florida isn't great, but that's BYU traveling cross country on the road week one and just handling their business. Baylor does not scare me at all in terms of their overall talent. Yes, they do have good coaching, but BYU being at home, this is a 10 15 Eastern night start. Uh, they should have a great crowd for their home opener. And I think they cover that easily. So those are kind of my, kind of my bonus bets overall. But uh, as for my top bets here for week two, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.